All right, Kansas City Chiefs, Cincinnati Bengals, part two. I already talked about the how the Bengals offense will attack the Chiefs defense. If you haven't seen that already, uh, check it out. It's on this channel. Uh, and if you have seen it already, let's just jump into this one. Although, even if you haven't seen that one, you can still uh, watch this one and enjoy it. Well, let's, let's preview the Chiefs offense, Patrick Mahomes going up against this Bengals defense that's playing really good football. So first, let's go here, and what you're looking at here is this is where each team ranks in certain categories in terms of PFF grades. Just a good idea to, you know, uh, give us a little glimpse at what these teams are. So for the Chiefs offense, I know people are going to complain about the passing being 13 and the receiving being 11. Uh, and listen, I think their receiving core is better than 11th, and I think their passing is better than 13, although I should mention, like, Mahomes did have a rough stretch in the middle of this season. He's bounced back tremendously, but he did have some not great games, although obviously we know that Patrick Mahomes is maybe the best quarterback in football, uh, and the receiving core is very good when it's playing at a high level. I would still say it could use an, uh, a third option, but, you know, with Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill, it's fantastic. Their offensive line has been incredible, that I agree with, and for the flip side, the Bengals' defense, uh, they cover well. Their pass rush has not been spectacular. So that's a pretty glaring strength for Kansas City heading into this football game. Meanwhile, for the Chiefs, they run block very well. The Bengals do not stop the run particularly well. Uh, we did see that kind of happen in the Tennessee game. So maybe some ground to run on here for Kansas City. Although, obviously, what we're all going to think about is the fact that if you're the Chiefs, you don't want to just run the football. You want to throw the football if possible, and we'll get more on that in just a second. This is an interesting stat that I wanted to talk about. So these are going to be the Kansas City receivers and how they match up versus man coverage and then versus zone coverage. The four categories are their PFF grade versus man coverage, the yards per reception versus man coverage, PFF grade versus zone coverage, and then yards per reception versus zone. So first for Tyreek Hill, uh, you know, his PFF grade versus man and versus zone is pretty similar. His yards per route ran, I can't remember if I said yards per route ran or yards per reception when explaining it, but it's yards per route ran, uh, so that's what it is. And you see for Tyreek Hill, uh, definitely higher when it's man than versus zone. In fact, you see a similar thing with McCole Hardman, uh, who has a much better yards per route ran versus man than versus zone, So, which makes sense. He has speed. He can blow by you in man uh, if you're not careful. Travis Kelsey plays better versus zone. So probably going to be a pretty decent Kelsey day since the Bengals do like to play a decent amount of zone coverage. I think it's fair to assume that. Although you look at the stat sheet from the last time these two teams played, and it's the opposite of what you would expect. I mean, you look at the receiving, uh, McCall Hardman had only one catch, but he was their leading receiver in it, you know, a 54-yard bomb there. So again, it's going to be a bit misleading because one catch can completely sway stuff. But still, I mean, you know, Tyreek Hill uh, and Byron Pringle and even Blake Bell had some solid production here. Travis Kelsey, five catches, but only 25 yards, although one of them did get into the end zone. For the rushing, Kansas City, as, you know, we saw this numbers suggest, they did have success rushing the football. And then Patrick Mahomes' box score stats aren't, like, horrible. They're not great either. They're not what, you, you know, it certainly wasn't like a great Patrick Mahomes day. So uh, what happened? Well, let's get into the film and talk about it. And let's start off with a play like this. So we saw uh, Cincinnati play a little bit of like cover three zone. They didn't seem to want to play too much because I'm quite frankly, I don't know why any team plays cover three zone against Kansas City. Cover two zone, sure. But in cover three zone, you only have a single safety deep, and this is going to make things difficult with their speedy receivers that the Chiefs have. This play is pretty simple. You have Tyreek Hill basically be a decoy. He runs over the middle. He's going to take the safety with him. You then have another receiver who's going to kind of follow him, and only this corner can then come over and try and make a play. As you see, Mahomes is going to take the snap right here, and it's really well ran route, and you're able to get a touchdown right there. So good job by Demarcus Robinson, who ran that route. He was able to get into the end zone, but that's kind of why you don't want to play cover three. I'd be surprised if we see any of that, quite frankly, at all. I wouldn't be shocked if we literally never see a single cover three zone play called, uh, unless it's like a heavy disguise, because that stuff can happen. So, okay, let's say Cincinnati is going to just play cover two zone all day, which is a coverage that can give Kansas City trouble. Well, there's things they can do, something like this. It's just kind of a quick underneath route. Mahomes takes the snap. He's going to hit Tyreek Hill, who is tough to tackle in open space, but they have three guys and can make the tackle. However, for Kansas City, you're picking up eight yards right there and getting within two yards of a first down on a second down situation. So, 
it's kind of one of those compromise plays. Kansas City will take that, but also so will Cincinnati. So the reality is, if the Chiefs have to continuously do this stuff, it's a win for the Bengals because you're not getting beat with these 50-yard conversions down the field. Like this one's another example of something that can happen where you're playing your two safety deep coverage. So what can Kansas City do? They can just run the football. Look, you can now block literally everybody on this play except for the safeties, but that's okay. If the safeties are the ones making the tackle on the running play, then you've won because they're far away. Watch how Mahomes is going to hand it off and the running game is going to be effective. So the running game should be effective in this game. But of course, the issue is like we saw it with Tennessee. It's hard to beat the Bengals running the football. You do kind of have to be able to throw the ball as well. And that's where things can get tricky. Although obviously, you know, there's no doubt about it that Patrick Mahomes is a lot better than Ryan Tannehill. So two things can be true at once. The running game can be you know, expected to have a lot of success for Kansas City. And you can also say it might not be that valuable and it might not matter too much. I think both things are true, uh, unless you're one of those people who still believes the best way to win a football game is by running the football, which there just isn't really much uh, truth to that, I don't think. But it does matter, and it is something that could come into play, for sure. You also have something like this, where what's going to happen here is that it's going to be a zone coverage play, and you're going to have Kelsey kind of run, you know, in that gap, basically, past the guys who are covering the middle of the field, but in front of the safeties. And, you know, Kelsey is amazing at getting behind those defenders and then just finding a soft spot in the zone coverage. But also, really, Cincinnati is good at taking that away. Watch how on this play, Cincinnati does do a good job of taking it away, but Mahomes is able to scramble around and then eventually find and hit Kelsey. And that's kind of what Mahomes can do so effectively, is just give his team an extra half second, which is all he needs on these plays, to get the ball down the field. And that's the Mahomes magic that will come into play. So that's honestly what happened a lot in this first game is... The Cincinnati Bengals actually did a pretty good job stopping a lot of these concepts that Kansas City was throwing at them. But the issue is Mahomes in this offense, they can make so many good plays that it just didn't matter. Typically, when I see that stuff, I say, okay, well, that's not very likely to repeat. So that's big advantage Cincinnati. But the flip side is, well, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. So they're actually, you know, there is a pretty high likelihood that that could repeat because they're really good. Although on a play like this, this is where things get a little bit interesting. It's going to be zone coverage. Again, cover two zone, what we're going to see a lot of. And the thing about zone coverage is if you make a mistake as a quarterback, there's a much higher likelihood of it getting intercepted just because there's more guys looking at the football. If it's man, you know, everyone's focused on their man. They're not paying as much attention to the football as in zone when everyone looks for the quarterback because that's what you're supposed to do in zone coverage. Watch how when Mahomes takes this snap, the corner does a great job of reading it and jumping the route and just drops the interception. So, okay, you didn't get it that time. That's not good. You ideally like to catch the football if possible. But at the same time, this is the kind of stuff that can happen. And Cincinnati was doing this and playing an aggressive zone defense, which I, I love an aggressive zone defense. That's what they can do. And that's, again, how they got uh, some of their interceptions against Ryan Tannehill was exactly that stuff. I want to talk about this play as well. I probably don't have to. I think we all know this, but I figured I should bring it up. You might say like, okay, well, do you want to play a man coverage every now and then? You can, but you got to make sure that, uh, t you know, you you're covering Tyree Kill. You got to make sure you're covering Travis Kelsey. And even that, I just don't know if I love it. You see this route. This is McCole Hardman's route. And this is kind of what we talked about, right? Well, wait, how is he the leading uh, receiver when it's a you know a team that plays heavily zone and he ends up being the leading receiver when he typically only is effective against man well it's because he had a big reception against man watch how he's just gonna blow by Mike Hilton who's a pretty good corner for them but I mean this is just a speed thing like you know Hardman's a hard guy to cover in this spot and so he's able to blow by Hilton and you're able to pick up a big gain on that one so again Kansas City they got a lot of guys who can make big plays against man coverage and that's okay Cincinnati doesn't play a ton of zone uh, again, I don't know the statistics on it, but just from what I've seen on tape, I see a lot more zone than man. And I think, you know, it's kind of a perfect matchup for uh, Cincinnati, I think, where they just naturally play a lot of cover two zone. And that's the coverage that's given Kansas City the most trouble. So it's just kind of one of those perfect matchups. And we'll see what Kansas City does to counter it. So final prediction time. So the first time these two teams played, there were 31 points on nine drives in the first game for Kansas City. That's a very impressive 3.4 points per drive. So again, I'm talking kind of a little bit negatively about the Chiefs offense, but it's really just, I mean, quite frankly, it's saying, hey, Cincinnati does a pretty good job at slowing down 
be statistically best offense in football this year. Cincinnati gives up uh, you know, a solid 1.88 points per drive on the year. Kansas City scores 2.81 points per drive on the year. That's the best in football. My prediction is we'll see basically a typical Kansas City performance, 2.8 points per drive on 10 drives. I do think that there is going to be a little something to the, you know, it's a good matchup for Cincinnati, no doubt about it. You can maybe even talk me down a little bit lower than 2.8 points per drive. But the flip side is I just think Mahomes, the Mahomes magic is going to work on certain plays regardless. And, you know, quite frankly, playoff Mahomes other than Super Bowls is really good. That's what he's done for his career. But I have the Bengals beating the Chiefs, so I'm sure all Bengals fans are very upset because I picked against them the first two games, and now I'm picking them to win the AFC Championship game. So, uh, again, we'll see how this works out. I do think it should be a very good game. It's not because I think the Chiefs suck that I'm picking the Bengals. Again, people sometimes think it's like an indictment on their team, but a lot of times in these playoff games, it comes down to matchups more than it comes down to talent. Although, again, I went 0 for 4 in my picks last week, which was the worst week I've ever done doing this. Typically, I'm pretty good at these, but last week was a bad one for me. Hopefully, I'll bounce back. But maybe for a Chiefs fan, you're happy I, I'm picking your team to lose. I don't know. We should, we'll, we'll wait and see. But yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.